Hi there, I'm Alex McLean. I'm the co-founder of Alveol, the urban beekeeping company. Today we're in downtown Montreal and this building behind me has a very unique feature. It has a beehive that has about 50,000 bees. And you might think that hive is just there to produce honey. It does produce honey, but it's actually more of a tenant amenity. It's there to create engagement and inspiration with the tenants that are in here. And obviously they get honey at the end of the year. For this building tour, we'll be joined by Emily. She's the beekeeper that manages this hive all year round. And so we're gonna go join her in the back and she's gonna answer all her questions about this location. Hi, Emily. Hey, Alex. My name is Emily and I'm the urban beekeeper in charge of the hive on this roof. I've been coming here every three weeks, all season since April. Today, we're gonna do something really exciting. It's kind of the summit. We're going to harvest the honey, where we uh, take all the honey out of the box and uh, bring it back to our warehouse to extract. Okay, brilliant. So where do we go? Uh, this way. Okay, I'll follow you. Okay, so let's start with the basics. There's 50,000 bees in this hive. And what are the bees doing on the day-to-day? -day? So the bees on the on the day-to-day, -day, they, they have tons of different roles assigned to them uh, that they're gonna go through in their life cycle. Uh, but uh, the, the ones that are foraging, so the ones leaving the hive, the ones we see outside, are foraging up to five kilometers uh, around this building and uh, grabbing nectar from the flowers and uh, bringing it back to the hive. So they would be able to go to the Mount Royal Park and the St. Lawrence River. They'd be able to go get all those different flowers, right? Exactly. And once they bring the nectar back inside the hive, then what are the next steps? So the bees are going to forage the flowers um, and take the nectar, which is very liquid, uh, and bring it back to the hive where they're going to dehydrate it, slowly turning it into honey. And then once it's at that like perfect moisture content so that it's preservable, which is the main point of bees uh, making honey, they will uh, cap it with a wax, wax capping that they uh, secrete from their abdomen. And then it's ready to go. And let's talk about the like the purpose of these beehive projects. Okay, so so the owner of this building decided that this was something that was important for them. Why do they do that? What's the idea behind it? The way I see the project is um, that like people want to have a connection to nature. People want to know more about bees. They want to learn. They want to understand. And it's just really hard in a city like this to get that information, to have the time to to go look for that information. So the hive serves as a catalyst to that connection to nature, kind of to getting that conversation going. And we bring it right to where they work every day and uh, where people are every day. And so they, they have access to that on a day-to-day -day basis. They get to start thinking about it and uh, yeah. This particular site has this beautiful garden on the, on, the, on the rooftop. Was this there when the hives arrive? What's the, you know, what's the kind of journey that building owners get on once they start doing beekeeping? first step is always bringing the hive to them at their workspace or in their school, somewhere that they're there every day and get to see it every day. And, um, and slowly and surely, you know, we get into conversations about, well, what are they foraging? And what is around here? And could there be more around here? And uh, slowly and surely we see those projects progress to one like this. So the hive started, the conversations then go into a bit larger idea around how to, how to help these bees. And then clients and owners are building then move into adding gardens, adding doing more, more projects. And that's kind of the, that's the, the dream, right? Is to get these buildings to be a little bit more connected to nature. Okay, so, so what's the link between BOMA and, and a beekeeping project? What is, where does that tie in? Yeah, well, it's really the simplicity um, of the projects that connects BOMA and uh, Alveol. We, uh, we collaborated with them to make a guide so that people really just have all of the information about how to get, how to get that hive on site. Um, Alveol is going to take care of all of that and with the, the BOMA guide, all the, the logistics are simplified as well, streamlined, simplified. Okay, so the, the Hive project happens at the building, but what's the whole virtual side of these projects? So we have two different kind of um, virtual aspects to this project. One is the visit to visit updates, which we have on My Hive, um, which is a portal we've created so that clients and tenants and anybody can, can kind of follow along with the Hive story online. Every time we come here, we update an inspection sheet onto this very accessible online portal that people can log in and see pictures of the Hive, pictures of their queen, figure out how many bees are in the Hive at this time, what's their foraging distance, uh, tons of information. And that Social media for in. bees. Exactly. <laughs> the other aspect is uh, the virtual workshops where uh, people can sign on to different conferencing platforms and uh, yeah, learn about bees. 
So uh, ask their questions, ask us what's going on. We, they get an hour of a full, full conversation with a beekeeper. They're generally centered around a specific topic like harvesting or candle making or Bees 101, but uh, people, yeah, they can access it from anywhere, which makes it also really fun. So from your home, from your couch, from your conference room, uh, it all goes. <laughs>